Hello everyone. In this video, I want to discuss the top three reasons why you might get an improper solution in structural equation modeling or confirmatory factor analysis. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to structural equation modeling or other latent variable methods, often uh, related to the M plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button for this video and to check out the description for additional free resources and uh, workshops. So in this video, I want to discuss a common problem in structural equation modeling that many people face when they run structural equation models or confirmatory factor models, and that is obtaining a solution that we call an improper solution or sometimes also referred to as a Haywood case. And so in such an improper solution, we have one or more parameter estimates that, there are, that are outside of the admissible range of values. For example, we have a solution maybe with a negative variance estimate or a negative residual or error variance estimate, or we might see a solution where a correlation between two variables is estimated to be greater than one. And so this is something that is not allowed. It doesn't make sense for a variance to be negative. It doesn't make sense for a correlation to be greater than 1.0. And so then the question is that I often encounter in my work as a statistical consultant, why did this happen? Like, How is it possible that I'm getting a negative um, variance or a correlation above one, for example? And so in this video, I want to um, explain a little bit from my perspective what I see as the most likely reasons, the most likely causes for such type types of solutions. And so the top one, so to say, reason for this is model misspecification. So almost always, or in I would say the majority of cases where we see an improper solution like that, really the reason is in the model. So you, you specify a model that, for example, may be too restricted, may have too many constraints, so say on the data, so that it totally doesn't fit the data and then as a result, so say when the estimation routine is trying to come up with the optimal parameter estimates to maximize the likelihood of the data given your model, then estimates may go out of bounds simply because otherwise, so say there can't be a close fit between the model and the data. So you need parameter estimates need to be chosen that are um, outside, so say, of the admissible values to in an attempt to give you the best possible fit. And so this is something that you might see is a model that is too restricted or also the opposite, where the model has too many parameters, is over parameterized. Maybe you have too many factors in your model, variables maybe load onto multiple factors and then um, there's just an over-parameterization where you have too much going on in the model. So the very first thing to check when you have, uh, when you encounter an improper solution is to review your model specification. And oftentimes you'll find that the model is either too restricted or it is overly parameterized, meaning it overfits the data. And that can often explain such an improper solution. And that's actually good news because that means it could be fixed in those cases. If it's really a problem with the model, then um, changing the model, changing the specification might help you uh, come up or get rid of this type of improper solution. The next most common from my perspective um, reason for an improper solution is a sample size that is too small. So structural equation modeling and confirmatory factor analysis are both large sample methods in a sense. So you shouldn't really do that probably with a sample that is only n equals 40 or n equals 50. So it is a large sample technique. And with smaller samples, we have greater sampling error, we have less stability in the estimates of a complex multivariate model, such as a confirmatory factor analysis or a structural equation model with latent variables. And then this might also contribute to 
a, to the problem of improper solutions is when you have a sample size that's too small. Now, how can you determine whether your sample size is large enough? Um, I have a free workshop that I offer on this topic, sample size planning in SEM, that you can check out in the description. It works via a Monte Carlo simulation, so you can simulate your model under different sample sizes, and then you can see whether you can get stable results. So check this out in case you're interested in sample size planning for SEM. If you're unsure whether your sample size is large enough, then run a Monte Carlo simulation study, for example, in the M Plus software, which makes it really easy to do such a simulation and then you can figure out too what the rate of improper solutions might be given different sample sizes in the simulation you would have an easy time finding out whether there are any replications for a given sample size that result in improper solutions and that would tell you then that um, the sample size may not be large enough. And then finally, so say the third most common reason from my perspective for an improper solution is just simply bad luck. So improper solutions can happen even when the sample size is large enough, even when your model is properly specified, it could just happen due to sampling error. So in any sample that we draw from the population, there's some amount of random sampling error. And so when you have parameter estimates, that are very close to the boundary in the population, so the boundary of admissible values. For example, when you have an indicator or observed variable that is very reliable, meaning that indicator's residual variance is close to zero simply because that variable has a high reliability, it measures mostly true score variance and little measurement error variance, then it could happen that due to chance, due to sampling fluctuations, you get a negative variance estimate because that um, true population error variance is very close to zero. Now that's kind of more rare that that would happen, especially if your sample size is decent, but it could happen. It could be the case that simply your parameter values are very close to a boundary. Also, we might have two factors in a confirmatory factor model that are almost correlated 1.0. So you have maybe two factors like depression and anxiety, very highly correlated. Um, for example, two traits that, that co coexist oftentimes, people who are anxious often also are depressed. And so they might be correlated 0.9, um, depending on what scales you're using. And then due to sampling error, um, depending on your sample size, the correlation might jump over 1.0 as a sample estimate. And so that would then simply be bad luck due to your sample. And there's not a lot that you could do other than collecting a fresh sample, so to say, and um, checking the result, cross-validating the result to see what you get when you collect data again. I hope you found this video useful to learn a little bit about the potential causes for improper solutions. I have more videos on improper solutions on this channel. There's a whole playlist about that here on this channel that I'm linking in the description where you can learn more about how to detect these and more, you can see some examples of those in the M plus software and I also provide some tips uh, for how to avoid these and how those could be fixed in those videos. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next week.